Welcome to the Golden Hour Podcast Experience with your hosts, David Altizer and Connor McCaskill. Let's go, you mother truckers. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Golden Hour Podcast. This is episode 178. Let's go. Yeah, we are actually not in the same room. Yeah, yeah, different experience. Um, now I'm talking to a Canon camera and I'm talking to you directly. Um, this feels weird. I have to look at the camera for the audience sake or I could look at you, but this probably <laughs> doesn't play as well, don't you think? Yeah, I I mean I'm same. I'm looking into my webcam. I'm actually using the Opal C1 webcam. Did you even Whoa. notice that? Oh. Um Yeah, it looks off. No, I'm kidding. It looks great. <laughs> it actually has some good depth of field. It's way. fake. Is it fake? <laughs> so it's um, it's really good fake uh, depth of field. If you're watching the video, you can see what I'm talking about. But watch this, Connor. Check that out. That's actually what it, that's what it actually looks like. But then the blur is uh, it's pretty realistic. Huh. But you can sort of see it failing on my headphones. I do see bit. it now. Now that I'm actually staring at it, I see the mess ups. But yeah, so that's but what who it cares? Looks like. Yeah, who cares for a webcam? Yeah. That's great. And I can adjust the white balance and the exposure and stuff. Um, yeah, I've, I picked this up just to try it out. It's, there's, you know, as a lot of Apple fans know, mm-hmm. the webcams on Macs are terrible. I know. Yeah. What's the deal with that? It's like Apple is so good at so many things, but the web camera, they're like, yeah, forget about it. You know, it doesn't even matter. It's literally a potato camera yeah. on all laptops. And it's weird because... I think on the phone it's pretty good. It's it still mm-hmm. has that kind of plasticky over over HDR like overly noise uh, suppressed. It's, it's like, like processed to hell and back, basically. It's so processed, but yeah. this company Opal, I saw they they are like a new company, and they mm-hmm. took the Google Pixel camera, the original Google Pixel camera, and put it in a webcam, and then okay. they have this software where you can dial in, you know, all your settings and stuff. Um, if you're the original pixel camera. Yeah. The original pixel, like I think it's from the original pixel number one. That's crazy. Cause like, aren't we on pixel eight now or coming up pixel seven? Yeah. But the pixel used the same camera for several years. They just kept making the software better. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, all these iPhone phone, mobile phone cameras, mm-hmm. they're, they're more or less the same. It is software that's being upgraded from phone to phone, it seems. But if you're looking at, uh, Connor, I think you have my Zoom, right? You could see my screen. Yeah, if I can you pull up your hop screen. Over to Zoom, on. Yeah, let me do you that. You can actually see uh, this is the little web app that it okay. comes with here. So I can control my focus. I can like manually adjust right. my focus okay. and dial in my bokeh. You know, honestly, if I dial it down just a little bit, you don't see as much of the funkiness, but it still gives me a bit of a bokeh. So yeah, like, that's yeah, nice. That looks better. Um, audio settings, which I'm not using. Um, some like color effects. I can dial in my sliders with exposure, contrast, white balance. Hmm. It's pretty cool. It's not bad um, for a webcam. It's yeah, it's and that's pretty, pretty cool. Good. That's that. Um, that's like that little black brick thing that I've seen you mm-hmm. around before, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's actually on top of my monitor right now. And yes, I could use my uh, my Lumix S5 it has the ability to do the USB-C, I, th- I think. Okay, no, I would believe that. Does it? Or maybe, maybe, no, it doesn't. I think the s 52 x is the one that has that ability. I'm not sure. Oh, I need to okay. do a test. But this is just so convenient. It's such a small little thing and it's there and, and it looks pretty good. So yeah, and what's what great you, about that is it sits right on your monitor. So when you look at your computer, it's not so obvious. Exactly. Yeah. Unless I'm just vain and want to look at myself off to the side. You're in right. the center. But uh, of course. We all know that good. people good. We all know that people just look at themselves when they're on a Zoom call. Oh yeah. Like FaceTime call. My eyes just go right to the bottom right. And I'm just <laughs> I'm like, it's like, why am I looking like, what's the point of the FaceTime call? I should just call you with audio if I'm just going to look at myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's like so the what point you, is to look at the person and you're not doing that. What are you using today as your webcam? 
this is the R6 Mark II. Um, yeah, I just plug it in, in over USB-C. It's actually pretty great. It's pretty convenient. I originally was like, oh, it's not working. You know, it took a little extra time to get recording today. Um, but it turns out, I, as far as I'm concerned, um, I just couldn't get it to work with FaceTime. I was testing it with FaceTime. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I'll test it with FaceTime until we start this um, Zencaster call. Um, and it just wasn't working. And then I was like, well, screw it. I'm just going to pull up Zencaster and figure it out later. And then I pull up <laughs> Zencaster and boop, there I am. Just, whoa, oh, here I am. Hey, yeah. all right, right on. So, yeah, it worked out <laughs> great. I guess, it, yeah, it's supported on different things like Zoom, Zoom Zencaster, I guess. But mm-hmm. I guess FaceTime isn't, it's not working with FaceTime. Yeah, or at least I'm an idiot and didn't quite figure it out. And it probably <laughs> is possible. Well, it looks good. looks sharp. It's the same set that we've been using. Your living yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same one. The same just get couch and where I was born. Place and the like. reason that and the reason that we decided to do this podcast remotely today is because I am getting over a bit of a cold. Yeah. So uh excuse me if I sound a little congested. I'm feeling a little bit better. You sound may, a lot better today. I may have to mute myself and, and do a little cough here and there, but didn't want to risk Connor getting sick. Um Plus, mm-hmm. we do live about forty-five minutes away, so this, even though we can be together, it is this more is convenient. Yeah, I was gonna say this is way more convenient. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's just get started with with the show today. Yeah, um, I wanted to share. I I mentioned this before we recorded, and it sounded like you didn't know about this controversy that okay. Samsung got in and it is related to photography so that's that's why we're talking about it today well i think i know where this is going kind of but i don't know enough because i heard something about the moon being fake yes um and now i'm not talking about being made of cheese i'm assuming it's something else uh doing technology and cameras now that i'm hearing camera maybe they like did a cgi moon is that what i'm understanding basically so marquez brownlee did a great video titled what is happening with samsung's camera and mm-hmm. in this video, you can actually see how as he zooms in, the camera just completely locks in on the moon, pulls the exposure all the way down, and completely adjusts the exposure for the moon. Perfectly. Can you play that again? Yeah, let me... He does it a couple of times here. It's pretty amazing, honestly. I hope that more companies do this. But as you zoom in to... What is it? Like uh, 100x it brings your exposure all the way down and stabilizes the shot. And in the video, you can see the actual shot of the moon here. And he does an example of having a picture of a moon in his studio on a screen and zooming in. And it's like a blurry, uh, he, he takes like an intentionally blurry image of the moon and does an experiment with this and then the moon ends up looking way sharper and crisper than the actual image itself so basically so yeah here's the here's the frame i just paused it Mm -hmm. so the source image that that marquez used of the moon he intentionally blurred and then samsung is like trying to add sharpness and all this other stuff to it and it almost looks like there's almost like an overlay going on There was a Reddit user that did some tests and some experiments with this. Basically, um, there was a viral Reddit post. So I'll pull that up first. But um, Samsung Space Soon moonshots are fake. And here's the proof. That's the title of (laughs) the Reddit post. That's a great uh, clickbaity title right there. Absolutely. Many of us have witnessed the breathtaking moon photos taken with the latest zoom lenses starting with the S20 Ultra. Nevertheless, I've always had doubts about their authenticity as they appear almost too perfect. While these images are not necessarily outright fabrications, neither are they entirely genuine. So he does this whole experiment basically um, showing that I downloaded this high-res image of the moon from the internet. I downsized and applied a Gaussian blur so that all the detail is gone. That means it's not recoverable. The information is just not there. Here's an image of that. I then full screened the image on my monitor, zoomed into the monitor, and voila, this is the image I got from the Samsung. 
taking a picture of a intentionally blurred image. This is a better example than Marquez's. Mm. So, hmm. so this is some... the result that we're looking at right now. If you're watching the video is a very normal looking moon. Yeah. It's like but, a picture of a bad zoom lens photo of the moon. So clearly there's some AI going on and it's identifying. It's like, Oh, there's a bright orb in a black sky. It's the moon. Uh, and then exactly. apply these settings to it to make it look better. Exactly. And yeah, the the thing that's interesting about the moon is that uh the moon is actually on uh the like i don't know the the term for it mm -hmm. but we always see the same face of the moon yeah it doesn't it doesn't spin yeah the the moon doesn't spin because it's on an orbit around the earth yeah. the, like it's pulling the earth is pulling it and it keeps it exactly the same no matter what um that's why there's the saying, the dark side of the moon. Like, right. It's the side it literally that we never see. A dark side, yeah. Yeah. Well, Samsung published uh, a blog post basically explaining the technology. And it's essentially what you just said, Connor. Mm -hmm. um, it does not apply any image overlaying to the photo. That's, that's the big accusations that uh, people were making is that because the moon is always the same, technically... <laughs> It all just they have to do PNG is just, on there. Yeah, all you have to do is just yeah. apply a PNG overlay to whatever image you're taking. Yeah. Um, because you could easily get away with that because nobody would really know as long as it, they're able to use AI to determine like what, you know, if it's a full moon, if it's a crescent moon, you know, so on and so forth. They just have like an image set of mm -hmm. like every variation of the moon and then when you point your camera at the moon or even just because the phone like knows what day it is, it mm -hmm. knows like your GPS coordinates. It it's pretty simple math to determine like, you know what what type of moon you're gonna have that night. Right. You know, right. yeah. Well, it's so not even it, math. It's just a Google search now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if if uh, human civilization, th you know, tens of thousands of years could understand astrology, mm -hmm. <laughs> like. I think, you know, Samsung could figure it out as well with the moon. And so, yeah, so people were accusing Samsung of, of es essentially taking a PNG and just, you know, applying it on top. Mm -hmm. But they're saying it does not apply any image overlaying to the photo. Users can deactivate the AI-based scene optimizer, which will disable automatic detail enhancements the photo taken by the user. So after multi-frame processing has taken place, Galaxy Camera harnesses Scene Optimizer's deep learning-based AI enhancement engine to effectively wow. eliminate remaining noise and enhance the image details further. That sounds so, like an Amazon product title. You know how they just stick every <laughs> word possible in the title just to make, you know, for the search engine. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they have this great um, chart that's like showing... The process of how this happens it's literally a picture of the moon that, in different phases you know in different phases that's yeah. the learning data input a low resolution moon picture so that's the photo that's taken by the camera on the samsung phone and then there's this like black box if you will of like detail enhancement engine but then the, it, the they're saying like we're just using ai to make it look better but it's just this black box so it's like mm. are you just saying Honestly, like, are you just scooting around the fact that it is just a PNG overlay? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, and so. also, also the fact that they're saying that their camera takes a low resolution photo. Yeah, that's odd. <laughs> yeah, so they're basically saying, yeah, our camera's crap, so we're sprucing it up. It's fine. I mean, that's um, that is the case for almost all mobile phone photography these days. Is just yeah. a, a crappy, you know, crappy f camera with a ton of AI going on. So yeah, it's kind of. I mean, you know, it works for 99% of the things you're going to do with a phone camera. So I almost wish the overlay thing was true, though, because that'd be really funny to just get like random little moons in the background when the camera thinks it's like, oh, that's the moon. And it just yeah. sticks a little moon over there. You know how like our <laughs> can't, like the autofocus eye tracking will sometimes just like be like, yep, that's yeah. an eye. It's like, yeah, no, it's exactly. not. Yeah. So that would be great. Just like people taking photos, just a little moon behind them for no reason. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's interesting. Um, it's not a surprise, you know, that's how, that's how this stuff works nowadays. It's just AI machine learning. And, um, but 
you know, is it an overlay on the on the image? We still don't really know. They're denying I guess, it, but I mean, it's an overlay for sure. I just don't think it's an image. I think it's just an overlay of effects and sharpening yeah. and whatever else. And maybe there is some tiny bit of image being added, but who knows? Yeah. Well, NAB is coming up. We've gone yeah. many. You've gone how many times now? Man, four or five years? Four, four, four times, maybe. Yeah, maybe four or five times. Because wh- when was it? Uh, how, uh, how old were you when you, you went for your first time? 21 on the dot. Yeah. On the <laughs> Tell dot. that story. <laughs> I turned 21 in Vegas at NAB. Um, I was like, oh, sick. You know, 21st birthday in Vegas. Let's go, you know. So, no, what happened was this. We decided to go out to dinner the night before with the buddy of Dave's. We went to some random, it was like something island, Burger Island yeah, or something. Some, yeah, it was our good friend Dakota deal, but that, I guess that was yeah. the first time you met him. But first yeah. time I met him, yeah. Then I've worked with him a few times since. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I got a, a burger, I think. And yeah. I, long story short, I got food poisoning. Um, so all for my birthday, which was the following day, I was just dying inside sick, uh, throwing up. It was not a good scene. Poor Dave had to put up with me as I'm just like beside myself. We were really looking forward to your birthday. It was the end of NAB and Mm -hmm. your birthday. We were going to go to the Red Rock, uh, national park, which we did go to. But we did because you looked at me and I'm probably look. <laughs> I almost look like I'm dying, I'm sure. And you're like, we don't have to go. If you don't want to, you can just like stay here and chill. And I'm like, no, I want to go. <laughs> and so you graciously drive us there. And I'm just, I think I'm in the passenger seat kind of like curled up, just kind of like, yeah. uh, you know, making like probably horrendous noises. And <laughs> And so we get there and like, I don't even want to get out of the car. So I think you just drove around the park for a while. And then we kind of just looked at it and then we're like, yeah, wow, red rocks. And then we went back and I just probably threw up again and then went to bed. Good birthday. <laughs> yeah. That was my birthday. <laughs> that was your 21st birthday. And it wasn't, you weren't sick from alcohol at all. I don't think we even got anything really, but no, I don't, I don't think I drank uh, anything cause I was sick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but that was your first time to Vegas. You were turning mm-hmm. 21. That was also your first time to NAB. So, I mean, before that night, which was the last night of the trip, you know, you did enjoy your time, I, I believe. Oh, it. yeah. I mean, that was the that was the black magic. Year, I was going to say. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, dude, I mean, I think we may have talked about this before. But, yeah, like the first year we went to um, NAB, we're getting this Kina Tika channel going and lo and behold, you know, this black magic pocket 4K camera is getting released to NAB. You had an inside source. Uh, what would you uh-huh. call him? It was his name, Captain Crunch. <laughs> what what uh, was his name? Uh, what was it? It was Captain, Captain Hook. Captain, Captain Hook. Hook. Yeah. yeah, close enough. Um, so yeah, we 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 sprint. We knew where the black magic, or you knew. I I was there. I was definitely present. Uh, you knew where the Black Magic booth was going to be, so we ran through the doors. We got a hold of the camera. We did a, I think, ten things to know or first look. Yeah, I'm looking first at first look. Oh uh, yeah, first look. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K NAB 2018. 2018. So, yeah, and um, good times. Yeah, we just it was re- fun, man. We speed recorded that, and we uh, ran to the lunch area. And Dave got on his computer, and he opened up Final Cut, and his hands were like smoking. He was editing so fast because he wanted <laughs> to be the first one out. And so I'm just kind of dilly dallying at that point because you know he's editing it, and I'm just kind of walking around. Look at this and I- shot. I remember you, it was the first time using the C100 and a monopod i think that was the first time you ever used a monopod look at the horizon on yeah that. <laughs> yeah i think i uh, i think i messed that shot up a little bit it's okay it doesn't matter it doesn't matter dang it but yeah um, this is yeah, early we, days early, early days yeah we rented the c100 mark ii that way i could have <laughs> the horizon um, is so bad <laughs> <laughs> that way i could have a uh, handheld microphone that we just plug straight in and so that yeah. that was a great little workflow i loved having a handheld mic i think it's hilarious it's it's so goofy um and so yeah and we just got a bunch of b-roll through this thing together real quick and this was back in the day before like you know especially before a company like black magic would send cameras out 
I don't think Blackmagic really ever sends anything out to people. They're not like a traditional like Sony who sends out cameras mm-hmm. for reviews. Um, but yeah, uh, we kind of broke the news on this. There, there was another company that got a video out, Rhin- Rhino, Rhino Sliders. Yeah, so I was going to bring that up. But actually sitting right next to us in the cafeteria in the lunch area was the Rhino. So I saw, I was like, oh, what are you guys working on? And they're like, oh, you know, we're, we're making a video on that black magic camera. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I walked over to Dave and I'm like, Dave, you got to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was yeah. a big deal for us. I mean, this video, you know, it has 400,000 views now, but uh, I remember we got 100,000 views that day, I believe. Yeah, I think by the time we left the show, it was at 200 something thousand. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it really took off for us. So and that was a big deal. And it was cool too, because that was, I mean, we've talked, I feel like we've talked about this like three or four times now on the show. Uh So I forgive me, those of you who have listened to this already, but it's just fun to reminisce. But like that day was the first day of NAB. We did this, you know, and I guess it was like actually the day before we kind of hung out and met some of the people Mm -hmm. It was before the show floor opened. And we kind of met some of the YouTubers like Caleb Pike and Levi Allen and Brandon Washington. That's, That's where right. we actually met Brandon for the first time. Yeah. And yeah. Justin Reeves, who he's not creating in this space anymore, but he's still a good friend. And I think he's super talented, honestly. But uh, it was cool to like meet people. And then like we did this and it went viral. And then the next day, Caleb Pike came up to us. He's like, so you... So who are you guys? You know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. so it yeah. was cool because it kind of gave us some street cred in a way to like, you know, be like, hey, we're with the big boys now. You know? Yeah, it legitimized us just a little bit. I think we made another video about that same camera just immediately afterwards. Yeah, uh, we did. We did three videos back to back to back. We Three did videos. Yeah. The first look, we did 10 things to know, which also performed well. And then should you use the black magic for YouTube? Mm. <laughs> back when like, uh, you know, Casey Neistat era of yeah. vlogging and stuff. It was like, should you use this camera for like vlogging and stuff? And it's like, well, there's a there's a record button on the front. They designed it like that. I'm, I think, for this idea, but no, obviously nobody is like nobody used this camera yeah. for vlogging. No, <laughs> but they were they didn't know what to do with it. But then the ten things to know did well because back in the day, like. You know, that was, I mean, that still is listicles just do well because it's just simple, easy to digest. And it was just like, here's 10 interesting things you don't know about it. And it's just, you know, whatever. Well, it's, it feels succinct. So it's, it's like, you, you know, when you, hear, when you see that, like 10 things to know, five things to know, whatever, um, you yeah. know, kind of what you're getting into. It's like, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to learn the things I want to learn and then I'm going to get out. Man, I, I've lost weight since then. That's cool to see that. Yeah. You're looking good, man. A chunky boy. No, I've always been. Now. I've been chunky over the last couple of years, but I'm working on that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so NAB 2023. What are your predictions, Connor? What are you excited about this year for this for this NAB? Mm, probably so doing we, nothing and hanging out with a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, we went last year and kind of hustled a little bit. I did some Soundstripe stuff. Yeah. I did that video. I'm, I am proud of. I think it was fun. Um, the the YouTuber questions one, yep. asking complicated questions. The fact that we got Ren from Corridor to be in it at the that very was beginning was yep. really fun. And honestly, kind of a dream. Like, I've never met him, so it was really cool to meet him. Yeah, it was really nice Nice to meet him. Um, and Armando failing so hard with the- like i kept upping it you know for 60 dollars you know for 80 dollars yeah Who's this man your brother? your brother <laughs> it's like no that's the yeah it was so funny because it was like the the questions i asked followed up with each other so like i, yeah. I asked what was the first popularized gimbal he said the ronin i was like no it's the movi mm-hmm. and he's like ah oh, yes yes i know i remember there's a that. thumbnail face right there Look at wow that that's face. a good face right there yeah, you should uh, you should clip that and use it in your thumbnails. So that was that was the only video that we made that year, um, la- or last yeah. year. 
Yeah, that but was yeah. fun. I don't know what to expect in terms of releases. I know Sony has some rumored cameras maybe coming out. Some Who knows? Maybe that'll be there. I don't know. It doesn't... I feel like... Maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't feel like cameras are released at NAB as much anymore. You know what I mean? Do you feel that? Or is mm-hmm. that just me? Yeah, I mean, we <clears throat> we may be kind of living in that like post-COVID world too where it's like ever since COVID, it, it just feels like that's the case. But maybe yeah. it'll go back to normal again but maybe. i do think i do think that these companies like controlling their releases mm-hmm. and when they're having to compete with everybody else at nab there there's like no control and it's just madness so i feel like companies like sony canon you know nikon fuji whatever mm-hmm. like all all of them they would rather just like pick a week And like send it out to a bunch of influencers and just say, hey, it's going to come out, you know, March, you know, March 24th. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, and then that whole week they take up, yeah, they just, they take up the news for that week and then they get all these videos. And then NAB is a place where people can get some hands on with those products, but it's not so much a place anymore. Like it used to be with these big camera announcements, although it, it used to be. Yeah, I feel like more now it feels like a better strategy for them is to announce it before NAB, release it before, or like even if they don't release it before NAB, announce it before NAB and then let people get hands on at NAB, like you're saying. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's kind of similar. It's very similar to the video game industry now. Um, Not that you asked, but uh, E3 was essentially the NAB of the video game industry and everyone did their big releases during E3. And now it seems like everyone just has their own events. Like Nintendo does their Nintendo Direct now. You know, they're not announcing games at E3 anymore. I feel like it's similar with the camera industry. It's like, we don't need NAB to announce our cameras. Like Sony's bigger than NAB in a way, you know? Yeah, especially with the power of every YouTuber. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have every single Sony. YouTuber that they can just be like, hmm, which one do we want this week? Oh, yes, let's do uh, let's do an Armando video this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but um, I do think it would be cool to see the, the rumored Canon uh, C200 Mark II announcement around that time and, and there. Mm-hmm. That's something that I'm hoping for and kind of crossing my fingers for because I would yeah. love to get some hands-on time with that camera. Mm-hmm. Um would it be a camera that I would want to switch to from my C70? Maybe not. I think the C70 is kind of what I like, which is sort of this hybrid type camera yeah. with cinema features. Um, whereas this one's going to be mostly a cinema camera, like a Komodo or something. But there's, yeah. it's, it, you know, when it comes out and you ask me, if anybody asks me, do you want this camera? I'll be like, yes, I want it. But yeah, of course, it's the new shiny thing. Yeah. Um, I think, but yeah, um, I, I just hope Canon makes some more RF lenses. That's really all I want. <laughs> yeah. I think that the, I don't think you should, I mean, hey, I'm just going to pre say this. You shouldn't switch to the C200 Mark II, probably. It doesn't fit no, your, no. it doesn't fit your style of shooting anymore. I like um, the flip screen. I need the flip screen. (laughs) Yeah, the flip screen. It's very easy to do like handheld stuff with the C70, the C200. I'm assuming C200 Mark II as well. Well, you'll probably want to rig it out more, which is not really your style either. So I don't, I don't see that working. Yeah, exactly. But it's still going to be cool. You know, it'll be cool to see it. It'll be a cool Um, camera. And I'm really just looking forward to. This will be the first year that I don't shoot something. Like I'm actually trying like you know unless soundstripe you know who i i work with and and we do two or three videos a a month unless they you know convince me i'm trying to convince them to not shoot anything um if anything it's gonna be be hard to convince them i feel if anything i may just like film a bunch of b-roll with my iphone Mm -hmm. and then come home and like film like in the studio and say, here's the top five interesting things that happened at NAB. And then I can just not a bad do idea. that the week after, you know? Yeah. Um, because I, the, every year for any of these events that we've gone to, you know, Cine Gear, Photokina, when, you know, we were blessed to go to the last one in Germany mm-hmm. and then NAB and CES, 
mm-hmm. all these events, I end up having a giant turtle shell backpack with all my lenses, you know, two or three extra batteries, you know, a wireless lav system, uh, an on-camera mic. Mm-hmm. You got to have your little aperture, you know, battery powered light, LED light. Um, you know, we've, we've even brought, brought the Ronin uh, S gimbal. You know, we, oh, I forgot we did that. <laughs> that I remember stupid. I had, remember the, uh, when we went to VidCon, I had the old, and by the way, I have it sitting right next to me, the old nice. uh, 1DC mm-hmm. on the Ronin S. I was just carrying this thing around with me, but that was also like, it was cool. It was like, you know, this camera, people think this camera is hilarious and stupid. That's why mm-hmm. I love it. And then putting it on oh. the Ronin S at the time, I think it was a new game. It was brand new. So it's not a it stupid was, camera. It was just so was awesome. impractical for what we were doing, but it's a great camera. <laughs> yeah. I need to fix it and just, because honestly, I could use this as one of our little podcast cams. Yeah, studio um, camera would be perfect. Nothing studio like, well, keep it on tr- sticks. Put the um, I'll put the uh, small HD monitor on it so I could flip it around and still does see it, myself. Does it still shoot motion JPEG though? That would be kind of annoying, wouldn't it? Well, now with Apple Silicon, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, uh, motion no. JPEG cuts like butter on Apple Silicon. Okay, well that's great. So you get that four two two eight bit four K. <laughs> which was a big deal back then and continuous recording yeah. anyways i'm so all that to say i'm just going to bring my iphone and i definitely will have my little anchor uh battery pack so mm-hmm. you know you're, you're looking at if you're watching the video you're looking at what i'm going to bring this is it and a backpack with my clothes and my toothbrush and uh yeah so i'm this is all i'm bringing this year I'm I'm only using an iPhone to capture content. I refuse to bring a camera, even though the Lumix S5 II is small. I kind of want to just force myself to just keep this in my pocket, and that is it. I don't want to like walk around and hold something. And I'm just gonna be there to meet and greet, like talk to people, yeah. interact with people, maybe shoot some footage on my phone. My brother's gonna go with me again. You'll be there. Um, be we're there. going to be rooming at the Condor House, which is going to be a total blast. Condor um, Blue for those. Uh, yeah. The Condor House almost sounds like a fancy place, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it would be nice. It'll be a nice, the Condor Blue people are putting us up well. Um, but um, but yeah. And, and I haven't made the event yet, but um, when we get closer to the NAB time, I will definitely put together another uh, annual now new annual in and out meetup. Yay, so I get to eat a lackluster burger. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're um if you're listening and and you're gonna be in Vegas during NAB, um I'll pick a night and we'll we'll go to In and Out together and just hang out and meet up. And it's just a good place for to meet up with people um and and talk. We had such a blast last time. Yeah, Everybody met up time. at In and Out. It was really cool. So We'll definitely do that again. So I'm looking forward to it in AB in April. Yeah, I will definitely be bringing a camera just in case something happens. I don't know that I'll be making content specifically for NAB, but if something happens to be there and I got to make the Yeah, you got to you got to do something. Yeah. yeah. You're in a different situation. I am in a different situation. It's not a bad situation. I just feel like, I mean, who knows? Maybe um, that Lumix S5 two x will be there that'll be interesting so yeah we could do something on that or like you said c200 or c200 mark ii uh-huh or maybe that uh sony camera that's got rumored that we'll be definitely talking about on the podcast here in a second i don't know when and then i think there's another <laughs> sony camera that's rumored who knows maybe that'll be there a lot of yeah. babies so that's a perfect segue into this new rumor from Sony about the the Sony ZV E1 yeah. rumored to be announced on March 29th. So uh, this is going to be a particularly exciting camera potentially because it's kind of like the evolution of the ZV E10, right? Mm-hmm. I'm getting that correct. Uh, but it's going to be full frame. That's nuts. Yes, and not only that. But it's using the same sensor as the A7S III. Mm. So this is not, you know, just another version of like the A7 IV sensor or like a less than sensor. Right. This is like the best, you know, <laughs> the best uh, arguably sensor for video. It's yeah. the same sensor that's used in the FX3. It's the same sensor that's used in the FX6, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the A7S III itself. 
So this is a big deal. That uh, my guess is that it will be cheaper than the A7S3, and that's what the rumors state. But yeah. it probably won't be crazy cheap either. Like it probably will. I would assume maybe be more than the A7 IV. I've maybe. I, I don't know. Heard maybe yeah, less. I would, no, I. I mean, I would be surprised. A7 IV twenty four hundred. So like, what if it's nineteen ninety nine? That'd be. I mean, that'd, that'd be, be insane. If that's the case, this camera will be a no brainer pick. But I have a feeling that it's going to come out right between. A7S3 and the um, A7 IV, which would put it right around three or maybe 28. Well, so the A7S3 is um, 3,500. Yeah. So, so you're thinking it might be like 3,000, like 299 or, yeah, I think or maybe, so or maybe 25. Maybe it's the same as the A7 IV. That'd be cool. That would, I that would be 25. cool. But the, the problem is they're not going to want to cannibalize their own lineup, right? So they still want to protect the A7 IV. Because like, why buy the A7 IV if this camera? Well, well I guess there's no, is there no EVF on this? So, so yeah, so, well, yeah, let's, before we jump ahead, let's run through the specs, the rumor specs. The here. specs are good. That's the thing. So, so I, I, I think it'll be expensive. So the, the new ZVE1 will be an E mount camera based on the A7S3. Um, the similar body to the A7C, which mm-hmm. is the small kind of compact version of the A7 III. A lot of A's thrown around in numbers here. Same A7S sensor. Uh, 4K 60 and 4K 120 with no crop, no pixel binning, uh, 409,000 ISO, again, because it's coming from the low light monster. Right. Same A7 IV autofocus, although another source said it has the A7 R5 autofocus system. Yeah. So there may be a misunderstanding here is what the rumors say. If it's the A7 R5 autofocus with the A7S sensor in a small compact body, that's cheaper than an a7s like i mean let's just shoot for the moon here and say because the zv line we're talking about the zv1 the Mm -hmm. zve10 they're both designed for like kind of like youtubers really vloggers youtubers the very the very plasticky (laughs) bodies yeah um, they're they're not really weather proof in fact i don't i don't think they are at all they also lack an evf um there's a chance maybe that this camera maybe doesn't have a mechanical shutter is my guess. Yeah, I would guess it does not. So they're probably going to remove the the mechanical shutter, which means if you do take photos with it, you're, you're taking it from an electronic shutter, which is fine. You could probably take raw photos. No problem. But there's a chance for some, yeah, it's not ideal. Like if you're a photographer that you you don't buy a camera for photography with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're a YouTuber, hello, Hi. Yep. Hi. Hi. Hey, how are we doing? I only need to I only need to take pictures for thumbnails. That's really all I need to use pictures and for. Instagram and maybe if you're in that game. Yeah, social oh, media. A but like a lot of them, yeah, I don't know. But I'm not I don't I don't need flash sync. I don't need like no. you know, mecha- I don't need mechanical shutter features. Yeah. And this the FX30, the Sony FX30, which is the cropped version of the FX3, that mm-hmm. doesn't have a mechanical shutter. And many of my friends have switched to that. One of them being Patrick Tommaso. He loves that camera. Yeah. Um, uses it for photography. It's it's perfectly adequate. So my guess is they'll remove the mechanical shutter. It'll be a plasticky body. They'll remove the EVF. You know, maybe maybe they'll remove the XLR module uh, accessory as well. You know, could happen. I don't know. Um, although they seem to put it on everything. But you include the A7R5 autofocus. You include that amazing sensor. Obviously, I would assume it'll have a flip screen on it. Mm-hmm. This thing's going to be a massive hit. And if they price it, I mean, let's just shoot for the moon here and say they are trying to compete with the S5 Mark II. Yeah. Because that camera just kind of dropped a bomb on the industry being under $2,000 with mm. open gate, with all That's that. That's actually a great point bringing up that camera because you're right. They're going to want to be competitive with that. Uh, I didn't even think about that. So, so you're right. If you maybe remove- it could lose. Mm-hmm. You remove all those features that are expensive, mechanical shutter, weather sealing, EVF, maybe they can make it nineteen ninety nine, like one dollar under two thousand dollars, you know? And that would be yeah. insane. I be- I hope it's not too plasticky. That would be my my 
hope with it because this definitely like I'm, I'm reading in on the rumors and stuff this is i'm planning on buying a sony camera here in the next little bit of time um just to have my hands in every camera brand not every camera brand but uh, as many as i can um so i do feel like it'd be important for me to own a sony camera these rumors sound really nice this sounds like a pretty sweet little sony camera but i would love for it to not feel super cheap if possible i think well, that the uh s5 buy the s7s3 <laughs> i know that's well, that's I, their response well that. or the a7 IV, um which is the one i was probably gonna buy if i was gonna buy one um just yeah. to not I, 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 yeah probably but let's say hypothetically this camera comes out with the a7s3 sensor with mm-hmm. a7r5 autofocus mm-hmm. with some of the limitations i'm listing and it's 500 dollars cheaper than the a7 IV. now which one are you choosing Probably bit- this one, even though I would love for... I, I do like an EVF, but I'd, I'd lose that for the sake yeah. of the other benefit. So it's you know it's the give and take, right? I would yeah. love for it... I would vote for it to be a little bit more expensive if it needed to be and then have like a more uh, robust body uh, build. Kind of like the S5 II because the S5 II is a cheaper camera and it is the cheaper body but it's also not cheap you know what i'm saying it's like a nice little medium the zve 10 is like 800 bucks so it makes sense for that thing to be made out of cheap plastic if this is closer to two grand i mean the fuji films are two grand and their build design is great now they don't have all those specs and features but still yeah but but i mean i i hear you for sure and obviously i would say Yes to all that as well, but you've got they've got everything else. They they have the A7S III with that EVF. They've mm-hmm. got the FX3, which is more video centric without an EVF with a really high quality build. Yeah. So by making a cheap build, by making it plasticky and removing all these other features, they're going to make arguably you know the best sensor for video, mm-hmm. really affordable. And not only that, but like best in class, like best in the world autofocus if it's the A7R5. So I'm almost willing to take a cheap plastic body compared to a nicer body from a Fuji or a nicer body from a a Lumix Mm -hmm. just because the bloody sensor and autofocus is literally the best in the world. I mean, it's It's best in class. Yeah. yeah. So um, Sony has that edge with this sensor the a7s sensor is phenomenal there's Mm -hmm. really nothing like there's nothing at all like it in terms of low light you know it's full frame it's got all these other features yeah the um, dual not to mention the e-mount sorry the yeah i was just gonna say not to mention the e-mount you know you and i coming from you know the canon rf world and the lackluster options that we have Mm -hmm. as a canon shooter and then you know, now that I've got the Lumix S5, it's great, but like they have a lot of limitations with their lens lineup as well in some ways. But Sony has like the best lens lineup for mirrorless as, in addition to the best autofocus, the best sensor. It's just hard to beat, man. This is going to be a great, if if it's if it's a budget option, if it's yeah. $2,500 and it's just an alternative to the a7 IV, maybe, uh, maybe I wouldn't be so excited, but if they yeah. can keep the price down, this will be a big deal. We'll have to see. I mean, you know, just because they take a feature away doesn't mean the camera gets cheaper necessarily. I mean, look at the A7S III and the FX6. No EVF on, or not the FX6, the FX3. No EVF on the FX3. So they took out a pretty nice chunk of a feature and it's $300 more. Yeah. Same sensor, cinema, same it's specs. Got a cinema badge on it. That's it's got a little badge on it. It has some screw mounts in it, I guess. That's a not fan. worth it. There's yeah, a fan. fan. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Uh, no, <laughs> it's um the FX3 always confused me because I'm like, you took out a really large feature and then added some smaller features, which are nice, but mm-hmm. still. And then it's three hundred dollars more. It, it just kind of blew my mind. If it was the same price, that'd be a, that would make a little more sense. You know, took out <laughs> yeah. some things, added some other things. It's now for someone else. I don't know. Whatever. And that one always have, befuddled me. We do have friends that swear by that camera. Sure, um, of course, of course. But- yeah, it's a great camera. But yeah, this will this will be real exciting to see the kind of what happens here. This is actually a very interesting rumor and a very interesting product from Sony. So yeah. stay tuned. Wow. Yeah. I'm hoping to get my hands on it ASAP. We'll see what happens. Um, so I would love to transition to discussing your new channel. We we okay. talked about it last week. Yeah, um, but you have since posted your first review on the Connor McCaskill channel. Tell me about the process of 
of what's going on like you know you've got your your first video like let's talk about it what yeah what's going on with the connor mccaskill channel um so just to uh, my plan with this video it by the way the video is that i compared the fujifilm xt5 to the fujifilm xt4 in a studio photography setting so that is essentially the video um my plan with this video this concept was originally before i had this channel Uh, It was going to go on my smaller personal channel. Um, That was the plan. I booked a ticket to Los Angeles to meet up with my good friend, Jake Bernal, who's an excellent photographer. Mm -hmm. Um, And I uh, Fujifilm actually let me borrow the X-T5 for this video, which was really great. And then when I got the channel, all this was already in motion. So I just pivoted and then made it for this channel. Um, So it was really cool. I had a lot of fun making this video. I think it turned out pretty great it definitely isn't probably the most optimal first video (laughs) (laughs) if i'm being honest um because you know xt5 is a little bit of a it's not an old camera but it's not brand new and as we know in the space the faster and quicker you get out news about the newest and latest greatest thing the more views you get that's just how it works um so i knew this was a little bit niche but it's something that i this is something that I really just wanted to do. Um, I love these two cameras. I love Fujifilm. Big fan, always have been. I always feel like everyone should own a Fujifilm. If you own anything, you know, insert Sony, Canon, Lumix, anything else here, you should own a Fujifilm as well. I think it's a great just extra camera to have. So I just wanted to make this video. And um, yeah, it's performing okay, uh, but kind of to be expected. Yeah, well, I I just want to give you props for a great first start. So, in fact, there's a comment from Fabi Puello. Man, you came in hitting hard. <laughs> yeah. Trophy award. Um, and I agree, man. I think, like, especially at this intro and just, like, the quality of the footage, the quality of the edit. This is top-tier stuff, you know, for our, our niche. Um, there's some great B-roll shots of you using the camera. Like, Jake got some really... Yeah pretty sick stuff of you like running around at the beach and like in LA and stuff. So it it was definitely, and then, you know, of course the Tennessee stuff is intercut there, but yeah, like all that ocean stuff and, um, walking around downtown LA, it was really cool. Yeah. It brought me back to the old days shooting at the, uh, in Laguna beach. Um, you know, that classic, classic look. And then I went back to Nashville and shot with some green trees, uh, for the April, (laughs) which I actually like it. I think it actually looks pretty decent. Just went to some random park around here with a buddy who helped me shoot it. But, um, yeah, this video definitely wasn't, um, it wasn't just made by me. Uh, tons of people helped me make this video. So just quick shout outs, not, that they're asking but you know jake obviously was an excellent photographer but he also shot a lot of b-roll and he helped me um i called him a lot actually to kind of just talk through the video and the edit and stuff like that so i appreciate that obviously i talked to you a lot about it um and you helped me out a lot with it as well and then also um uh jonathan masters stopped by for a little bit and yeah he, i saw he him helped out a um, friend of ours yeah, so um, I don't know that I used any of his footage, but if anything, he helped me with DaVinci Resolve because I did color some of it, not all of it, weirdly. it's That was a whole thing. I'm trying to learn DaVinci Resolve. It's not going well. Um, but he helped me <laughs> to like, um, he helped me to kind of figure out how color space transforms work because I'm, I'm pretty color illiterate, if I'm being honest. Um, every channel I've ever worked for, you or Armando or whoever, just insert creator that I've done any edit for here. Um, I've never color graded. I, I never had to, I mean, very rarely would I ever do color. Um, cause everyone, I've, I don't know, everyone kind of has their own thing with color, which is fine. You know, it's their look or I'm whatever. So I never, I never color graded. So now I'm having to learn it on the fly. And I think the yeah. color ended up looking pretty all right, but it took I think it looks so great, much dude. time. It took so much time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were also shooting on, you know, you were shooting on your R6, you were shooting on the Fuji, you were shooting on uh on J- Sony uh, FX6. J- Sony. And also so, there was an S1H in there for a little bit. Oh my goodness. So yeah, yeah, like I mean, that's a lot of mixing and matching and um for me personally, I can't stand <laughs> mixing and matching a lot of cameras so mm-hmm. uh i try to stick with one brand if possible like if in an ideal world i just own like three c70s and just have everything <laughs> shot on that but yeah um yeah so i mean but 
in a realistic sense, you have to kind of mix and match things sometimes. And mm-hmm. I think you pulled it off really well. Well, thanks. Uh, here's my main question. And by the way, if you haven't watched it already, go check it out. Connor McCaskill, youtube.com slash at Connor McCaskill. Yep. Is, uh, YouTube is using handles now instead of just standard usernames. Which I think um, is kind of cool. I like it. It is. Yeah. It, it works for shorts and all that, which we can maybe yeah. talk about a little bit here. But what... My, I have a question for you. Like now okay. that you've been a, you know, a YouTuber of a channel with over eighty thousand subs for about wow. two or three weeks now, yeah. and yeah. you've been thinking about things. I know you're you're going to be working on a, another video coming soon. Mm-hmm. Like, what are your thoughts as now for the first time being, uh, you know, a solo creator, if you will, and and having a channel with some legs and a, a history to it? I mean, what are what are you thinking? Like, what are your goals? Mm-hmm. How does how does it feel being a YouTuber? <laughs> well, okay. So here's what I'll say. It, it's a lot to live up to for one because it's like this channel does have a history. So I do feel that pressure of like, okay, I can't just make whatever. I got to kind of make something that's, you know, good. <laughs> I mean, not that I wouldn't <laughs> make something good anyways, but there's that little added pressure because this channel isn't just a channel that I started up out of nowhere. So that is um, one thing. But um, I already told you this, but I'll tell you again on the podcast, I got to give you props. Being the guy who makes the decisions is not easy. And mm-hmm. since I'm the only guy, I'm the guy who makes the decisions. So it's it, there's like, I, you know, I spent a lot of time on this edit. I'm really happy with the edit. Um, mm-hmm. And then it hit me the day before I posted it. I was like, I got to do this again. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. you it know what I mean? like a marathon up until the moment you post it and then you're like shoot what's next (laughs) yeah exactly so like i was like oh my gosh i have to make another video because the goal is and we'll see how well i do um we'll see (laughs) you guys can hold me accountable my goal is to post every tuesday um if i can help it um maybe that's too tough on myself considering that this isn't making money and i'm you know having to do other things in between but that's the goal because I, I think there's value in that. But I just because I'm releasing every week doesn't mean that I want to be releasing garbage. Not saying other people do that, <laughs> but that's my own pressure, right? Sure. Um, that's the so it's there's just it's a hard to make the decisions. It's like what do I do next? And when you have, as you said, when you have endless choices, any choice you make, you always feel like there was a better one to make, right? So it's, it's not, it's not an easy decision. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm definitely, I feel a little thrusted into this, but I think over time it'll become more and more normal. And then hopefully if this can make any kind of money, uh, I can start, I I can stop doing other things and then I can just focus on this and then it's not as big of a deal. Yeah. I, I appreciate the, uh, little, the, the compliment. I appreciate that. But, mm-hmm. um, but I agree. I, I'm right there with you. I mean, it's, it's, uh, but I, I love the process of YouTube, but it is hard and it's, um, it's super fun and rewarding. And I think a lot of people see the videos and they see the results, but there's so many hours of, you know, sitting at a computer and, and yeah. editing and then beyond that, there's a ton of time ideating or coming up with ideas and like strategizing and th- thinking about, you know, the current state of YouTube and studying mm-hmm. what is working and, and looking at your data and thinking about titles and thumbnails. And th- but then also taking what works for titles and thumbnails and somehow making it still feel authentic and making it not cringy and like mm-hmm. that balance of like, okay, well, the Mr. Beast style of a challenge or whatever is what works, but you know, our audience is mostly male uh, between the ages of 20 and 30 to 40 years old. So like, and that's a generalization. There's obviously maybe some of you listening who are like, I'm not that demographic. It's like, we, we love you too. Thanks for being here. But yeah, you know the majority more of, of you guys audience. actually we need, we need more, more people out of our demographic <laughs> um not to say that our demographic is a bad demographic but it, it is nice to include more people as we as we can um and hopefully that'll come in time but it does seem to be a particular type of person that is drawn to this stuff it just that does seem to be the case 
And so the the challenge is trying to fit, you know, what works with YouTube with our audience and making it feel authentic and not, like I said, not cringy. Mm-hmm. And so I, I know you've struggled with that. It's like, you know what technically works on YouTube, but you don't want it to be inauthentic, but that's okay. That's like, that's the whole game. That's the whole point is to figure out what works best for you. And you can find people who respond to that over time. Yeah. I mean, I have 11 versions of thumbnails on my computer um, for this <laughs> one video because it's like, you know, you, do, you you move the text over here and then you maybe you add an arrow and that looks stupid. Okay. And I'm going to shift the cameras over here. Well, maybe they don't want to see the cameras. Maybe they want to see the results. Now I have pictures of the actual images that you would end up seeing. And then it's like, well, I changed the text over here. Maybe I blur out one of the images. Maybe I don't blur out one of the images. Maybe I go with the super YouTube thumbnail, like you suggested for a little bit, where it's like a white background with just the camera well, camera <laughs> and then like an arrow pointing to it, like super minimalist. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up settling on something different than all of those. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> but um, maybe you wouldn't have arrived at where you arrived without all those experiments too. Cause I think mm-hmm. you, you landed on what, when you see it, you're like, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's, that's what it should have been, but it took a lot of variations to get to that point. Yeah. And I think also I played around a lot with the title because Again, it's like this is the first video. I know it's probably not going to do the best because I'm trying to revive a channel that has been kind of not doing as well lately um, just because it hasn't had content. Yeah, and we haven't, have, didn't post anything. The, yeah, the last like real big nothing. video was the DJI video that we did a, a whole year ago. A whole year ago, yeah. Now. And so, it, you know, the channel needs some some love and care. So I knew going into it, I was like, you know, chances are not good for this video to do well because it's a niche video about a camera that's a little old on a channel that hasn't had any content on it in a year. So there's not a lot going for it in terms of that. But I still wanted to play around with it and experiment with it. Um, And I ended up settling on a title that was just exactly what the video is. Like, Mm -hmm. like word for word, this is what you, if you're clicking on this, that's what you're going to (laughs) get. Yeah. um, I don't know if that's good or bad. I know more minimalism <laughs> seems to be better now, but who well, knows? Minimalism for the sake of minimalism isn't necessarily good. It's you really want to just deliver on what like you want to just deliver what people expect. So the title that you picked is Fujifilm XT5 versus XT4 Studio Photography Comparison. And you know, the the thumbnail is different than the title. You're not putting XT5 versus XT4 in the thumbnail. You're putting mm-hmm. 40 megapixels versus 26 megapixels. Right. So I like that because you're not mentioning the megapixel difference in the title, but it's there in the thumbnail. So mm-hmm. when you read the title, it's like, oh, studio photography. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, there is a big difference in megapixels. So the title and the thumbnail really play off each other well. And it's just a really nice shot of the cameras. I noticed you kind of boosted the blacks a bit. So it it's not as dark as it used to be. So actually, um, to credit where credit is due, uh, Jake took the photo. Um, so that's Jake's photography that you're looking at. And then also, Jake edited that. And I want... Nice. <laughs> um, so um, I, we, we were on the phone and he was talking about the thumbnail and he was like bro like i will whip you up something in 10 minutes and i was like okay nice <laughs> and so sure enough he he spit that out and i was like yeah that works i had something very similar to it but i like the um the font choice he chose so much better than the font choice i chose there is a real That's art nice, to yeah. graphic design and um some totally. people some people are better at it that might not be my best thing so hopefully hopefully i can uh start to learn how to do that a little bit better yeah yeah, I saw um, a tweet from Ryan Trahan. Somebody asked just a, a general question to people: What is one of the most underrated, uh, you know, things about being a YouTube creator? And Ryan Trahan, who's a well-known you know YouTuber, he responded. I think Ryan Trahan responded: um, One of the most underrated things about being a creator is having like a graphics pack and having an idea of like, these are the fonts that I'm going to use. This is the tone 
of all my videos. Mm -hmm. These are the styles that I'm going for. And basically it seems like Ryan in his response was saying like he has certain titles that like when I have a big bold thing, I have, this is the font I'm using with the subtext being this, when I'm doing captions, this is the font that I'm using and it all has a graphical and tonal um, continuity to it. And, you know, it's going to take time for you to build that up. But I mean, whatever font um, Jake used there, like make a note of that and just make that one of your graphical pieces that you use for all your thumbnails for maybe even the majority of your titles and your videos. That way it, it feels cohesive. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Um, I did spend some time before making this video, just kind of like sifting through graphic coal things that I knew I wanted to add and including grabbing a font that I thought I liked, um, for my, video like as any text that i put in the video so all of that text is the text that i like but um i think that probably like trahan was saying having it for this is for thumbnail fonts because this plays better for a thumbnail it's like fonts sure. are good for different things and um so i need to probably build out all of that uh, yeah. when i have time while you were on the topic of thumbnails i just wanted to share with our audience something really fascinating that happened for me with um, the channel that I consult, which is the Soundstripe channel, mm -hmm. I co-host and consult and do kind of all the back end, like, you know, YouTube ideas and, and thumbnail titles, et cetera. But then Chris Haggerty, um, who's a DP, he does some of the shooting of it and also um, kind of creative direction overall. Yeah. But then I, I handle kind of the YouTube stuff. But there's a trend right now on youtube for this really minimalist white background uh thumbnail design and this isn't a surefire thing i mean it's not like if you do this you will get a million views mm -hmm. but it's kind Unless of it's about spongebob apparently <laughs> yeah 5.6 million views good job yeah all the, um i'm pulling i've pulled up a tweet from jay alto who's a thumbnail artist he said, YouTube thumbnail prediction, we're about to see a lot more minimalist white background thumbnails. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to it because um, a lot of people, especially in our niche, keep their uh, computer in dark mode. Uh, I know I do. I do, for um, sure. Yeah. And then my phone as well. In fact, when I when YouTube is not in dark mode, it looks wrong to me. I'm so used to dark mode. Mm -hmm. And the white background uh, minimalist design really pops on black. Obviously it's the opposite of, of dark mm -hmm. and, um, and the simplicity of it too almost stands out because in our niche people take really beautiful photos. Um, and so almost every thumbnail is a nice photo. And so I experimented with this with a video and it wasn't doing well, but then yesterday it just took off like crazy. Yeah. It had, um, let's see, it was kind of, it was sitting at like 600 views and then within a day it shot up to like 10,000 views. And then now we're sitting at 20, uh, 12,500. It's slowing down now, mm -hmm. but I've never seen such a rise like that, uh, in such a short amount of time. And the thumbnail that I went with, especially was, for, did you, so just to clarify, did you, have a thumbnail originally that was different than this or was that the thumbnail no. from the start? No, this was, this was an intentional experiment uh, from the beginning to try this style. I've yeah. since uh, done this style for a couple other videos just to try it. Um, but yeah, so the, the title is comparing $60,000 Sony Venice two to Canon C500 Mark two, mm -hmm. which I mean, I knew this was a good idea. It's like a good video because like everybody wants to see the Venice 2, which is kind of the flagship camera in Hollywood right now compared to other cameras. Yeah. So I knew that like this is a good idea. And I changed the title, I think about five times until I landed on this. And so obviously this title works, but it's just a, uh, I'm literally just using stock photos of the Sony Venice just from Google. And then the Canon C500 Mark II made the Venice really big, made the camera really small and just put, like Helvetica font, it's over. Mm -hmm. So it's just really simple and clean. 
And I don't know, I guess it just is a good combination. I mean, though we have this other video, we shot a commercial using the S5 II, and that one's just a really nice photo of the camera and that performed yeah. well. So well, that, that photo almost looks more like it's a video about that lens instead of the camera. Yeah, I know uh, that lens is interesting. So that was the idea is that we're using yeah. an anamorphic lens on the Lumix, which a lot of people didn't do. Of course, so, you have a very classic thumbnail of just holding the camera to the lens with the R6 Mark II. That one did pretty decent mm-hmm. in compared to other ones. So, And that's that's utilizing my theory of just having a simple piece of text that plays off of the title. Yeah. So, yeah, R6 Mark II final review after two months. Buy me. Yeah. So I'm kind of, it's not, you know, R6 Mark II. It's not like great camera it's like uh, kind of creating a statement or like this one sony is unstoppable how you know kind of the two play off each other so um anyways i just think it's interesting that that thumbnail worked and that that title worked i mean you still have to have a good video and i do think the video is pretty good like it's a fun little comparison and it's set up in a youtube format where we we start off with these are all Malachi's edits, which are hilarious. Um, yeah. Malachi Sully, who edits these videos, he does a great job doing yeah, he, he goes comedy ham with stuff. the memes. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's this great, you know, kind of vlog of comparing the two cameras. And then at the end, Chris and I look at the footage. So there's like a reason for people to watch to the end if they're interested in seeing the comparison. Um, so the video is good. But it's really not about video for us. I, f- I feel like, I mean, the idea has to be good. And then mm-hmm. you and I, and, you know, people in our little world, like know how to make good videos. So the next step is like just finding the right title thumbnail. And if you can yes. get them in Packaging. the door, then and if the video is good, which I feel confident about making good videos, if the packaging is good, then people are going to click on it. So it's yeah. interesting. It is interesting. I, you know, the simple thumbnail there's a there's a fine line with it though right so like that white background with the just the two cameras and it's over right Mm -hmm. it does look it actually looks pretty good but i feel like very very quickly if you're not careful that it goes from it though this is just minimalist to this just looks bad you know (laughs) And, and there's that it can it can teeter either way really quickly in my opinion um yeah, I agree. That's kind of the harder thing to to do with that. So I think it maybe takes an extra special eye to make it good still and simple. Yeah, I, I th- <clears throat> my theory is is that like it is, yeah, it's really simple. You kind of have to have a, an understanding of composition. So like as you're laying it out, obviously you want to think about that. Maybe like a drop shadow could be an interesting thing to do or, or taking a photo of the product so that it's still a, a unique image that you're mm-hmm. then cutting out and putting. So you're intentionally doing it rather than just pulling stuff from the internet. But I don't know. I think my theory is kind of like, it does look kind of amateur and thrown together, but then when you click on it, the video is really well produced. So like it's super well shot. We get right into the action right away. We're proving to the audience that like I'm holding the Venice which is a $60,000 camera. Like I'm holding it at the beginning saying, we're comparing this, the Venice two to the C 500 Mark two, which you see all of it. You see all the footage. So like I'm, we're getting you in the door with the bright white and the simplicity of it. But then Mm -hmm. people stick around because we're actually doing, you know, it's actually good video. So yeah, it's kind of interesting though. Cause I always heard both. I heard the psychology of it with products, right? So it's like, you're comparing these two cameras. Um, that you want to have it actually there in the thumbnail because then it implies that you actually have it for when they click on the video. Because a lot of times people will make videos and it'll just be a PNG of the mm-hmm. camera or whatever, and then they click on it and then you don't have the product. Yeah, and exactly. so I mean that makes sense if you're making a video about something that hasn't released yet, but that makes a lot less sense when you know the camera's been out for a while. Um, which is what a lot of people do. So it is an interesting thing that you're now applying that and it that doesn't seem to be the case. But that's always what we were kind of thinking before. Yeah. It might have to do with the fact that like now videos play 
when you hover over it, mm -hmm. they auto play. So like if you hover over this video and I'm, I'm doing, it if you're watching the video, it just starts, although, well, actually that's not fair because it's already, I'll go to an incognito window. So if I hover over it, oh no, it's going to this moment. That's weird. Skateboard. Why is it doing that? So I have a theory about that because I've noticed. I thought, I thought the autoplay used to go straight to the beginning. So my theory with this is with the autoplay, because it doesn't. And I've noticed that too. A lot of times I notice that it goes to the ad. Um, so like if a YouTuber has an ad in their video, like this video is brought to you by Soundstripe, you know, whatever. And then like you'll see the huh. graphics for the advertisement in the autoplay. I wonder if they're showing you the least watched part because if you click on it still at the least watched part, chances are you're going to watch the whole thing. I wonder if that's the psychology to that. Uh, but I've also noticed that does, that's not always the case. So I do wonder if maybe the algorithm is just playing with that. So it's like, all right, we're going to show this guy the least watched part and see if he still clicks on it. And then this guy, we're going to show him the most watched part of the video and see if he clicks on it. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Huh. Weird. Yeah. Well, just wanted to share my findings. I find it mildly uh, fascinating. I, I find it extremely fascinating, but <laughs> I was maybe say. you guys find it mildly <laughs> I find it fascinating and frustrating. <laughs> that's that's my take on it because it's like, it's just, again, it's the limitless possibilities and then which decision do you make, you know? And by the way, I have something in my pocket here. It's the original, oh. the original Blackmagic pocket. <laughs> is that the one you owned before? Is this a new one? Oh yeah, this is super old. I, I This is broken it, the camera broke in half when i was in nicaragua on a shoot i ha i used to own two of these mm -hmm. this was one of the two and i had the speed booster and the sigma 18 to 35 and the tokina 11 to 16 and this camera the black magic pocket cinema camera the original um was phenomenal at the time it was 900 dollars, and it did 1080p pro res and it looked really good it had tons of dynamic range um very amazing little camera and this is where the name comes from black magic pocket because this one really is like a pocket camera it's tiny yeah it can actually fit in your pocket um so this is completely broken i even sent it into black magic to see if they could fix it and they're like it's not worth it it'd be cheaper for you to just buy a, a new one so they sent it back to me and so i just have a, a shell of a camera that i can kind of play with and hold and stuff are you planning on doing something with it or are you just showing it off no i'm just showing it off it's just sitting oh, okay. here at my desk cool so i've got i've got two broken old cameras here yeah uh i i saw recently i don't know what it is with that camera um i've been seeing like a lot of youtube videos pop up recently with that camera the original pocket um i wonder if it's making a, like it's a, some, a resurgence some or something there's yeah. a fascination with it but i definitely don't think it's that good of a image really like you don't need to go get one um no. in my opinion but it, there's a lot of people who are just now getting into video and like it's funny because i am an old man now in this world of like <laughs> i had this camera and used it and yeah. was part of the dslr revolution and there's a lot of kids coming into youtube and filmmaking that like have never even heard about it and so they're probably fascinated by it so mm -hmm. um Anyways, yeah, we talked for about an hour and 15 minutes, Connor. Not bad. Pretty good. Hey, you know, uh, we, we've been struggling to get over an hour with these. I guess we had actually something to talk about this week. We did, man. We right did. on. It was a good chat. Something about being maybe apart from each other that makes us talk more. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, shoot, you call me on the phone and we'll talk for like an hour and a half. And then like yeah. we sit down for the podcast and we're like, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, doing good. I'm doing good how you doing you know then that's that's how that goes so maybe we, maybe we should keep this up i don't know let us know if you like this format or if you prefer us to be awkwardly sitting next to each other let me know <laughs> i think this works well i'm I'm actually really impressed with the opal it actually looks surprisingly good it's never looked this good but it's also because yeah. i have some decent lighting in here so i do notice that it is pulsing a little bit with light on my end i don't know if that's going to pick up ah or... weird yeah, I have um, noticed that about it in the past. And I have everything locked down, like the exposure is locked. Interesting, but it's still something is... Oh, now it looks really wrong. But it's still like uh, doing something. Maybe I needed to lock the brightness. 
I don't know. Yeah, there's some yeah. funky stuff. It is like a technically a you know cell phone camera, so it's. I mean, can't you do that with your iPhone now? You can just attach it to your MacBook and yeah. pair it and use it. It's so stupid. I mean, I it, it makes. It, I don't think it would look this uh, saturated and crunchy and sharp and stuff. Like the iPhone always does all the weird HDR noise I, reduction crap. I, I don't like the HDR stuff. It looks good ten percent of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um cool well i guess that's about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess it is play yeah. the music yeah there it is well yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the show uh again if you are listening to the podcast make sure to uh leave us a rating and review in the apple podcast player um, that helps boost the show if you're a spotify listener you can rate and review in spotify as well we've also got chapters i always remind people so feel free to use those chapters. We work hard to make sure to include those in the audio. If you're on the YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe and comment down below. Thanks again for listening. I'm David Altizer. And I'm Connor McCaskill. And we'll see you next week. See you guys.